thank you so much for coming down today. We are really glad to have you here. Um, the three of us, together with our coaches, Jin Si, Amanda, and Salome, are here today to share with you what we've been up to for the past couple of months. But first, we'd like to introduce ourselves. My name is Sabrina. I am, um, I've been uh, self-studying, uh, developing uh, for a couple of months before I came across the uh, Tech Ladies uh, Facebook page. So thank you, Facebook algorithms. <laughs> um, I like developing because it allows me to tinker a lot. And um, I'm that person that um, over-customizes their Sim City character before they start, sorry, the Sims character before they start playing the Sims. And um, coding makes me happy because it allows me to tinker to my heart's content just on a whole new level. Um, what drew me most to the, this iteration of the Tech Ladies Bootcamp is actually that this is the first time they'll be teaching a fully JavaScript stack. And of course, that we'd actually be sending a live app for an NGO to production. Yeah. Um, my name is Eunice, and uh, I think my background is in biology, so I don't really have a lot of coding experience. So I thought it would be a really, really great opportunity to join this boot camp to learn more about web development and coding. Yeah. My name is Verena. I'm electrical engineering graduate. Uh, I was interested to apply to this bootcamp because I thought the web development skill is very useful and I think the project is meaningful and when I went to the uh, bootcamp session, I thought the coaches are awesome. So, although this was a 12-week bootcamp, it has actually been a little longer than that for our coaches. So back in July of last year, um, they first met up with our clients to better understand their needs as well as goals. So who are our clients? The Sustainable Solutions Network believes that the best way to achieve sustainability is to do it together. That means Fostering collaboration between the many stakeholders in the local environmental community. They work with more than 30 environmental leaders and organizations in Singapore. They also launched their online portal back in 2016. What do SSN do? They provide online resources to create, access, and level the playing field across stakeholders. They facilitate topical environmental conversations from balanced perspectives, and they promote collaborative efforts among all stakeholders across the government, corporate, non-profit, and academia sectors. So, how can we help? Sorry, not that one. Um, as you can see, collaboration is a key tenet of the SSN organization. Our clients wish to have a single platform that will allow them to publish all of the environmental related events that were being held in Singapore. Previously, when an environmental organization wished to publicize their campaign or event, they would post the details on their own website. On SSN's site, even though they had an existing online portal, they were relying on a calendar plugin on their site to inform the public of any activities that the stakeholders they work with wanted to publicize. This resulted in a rather fractured experience for anyone interested in environmental related events. With our app, with our app we aim to deliver a site where all organizations will be able to publicize their campaigns and events in one place. Earlier on, I had mentioned that our coaches had met up with our clients. That makes up the first part of our timeline here. To help ourselves stay on track with our clients' goals, we created user stories on Trello in the format of... Oh, sorry. As a type of user, I want to do a certain task so that I may and goal. 
We did this to place ourselves in the shoes of a user of the app and ensure that we did not deviate from the end goals that we had identified. Moving on to the next step in the timeline, our designer Curly then helped create a user interface that would best display the information that our clients deem most important for a project, ensuring that each user's experience on the app was as straightforward and as easy to understand as possible. Finally, with a proper design realized, we were ready to embark on the development of the SSN app. For the third step, we are using the MERN, which stands for HomoDB, Express, React, and Node. So React is JavaScript library, which helped us uh, build our front-end web application. Node.js is the JavaScript runtime environment, um, which is, you can think of it as an asynchronous event-based engine uh, to run our back-end server. Uh, by asynchronous, uh, event driven uh, means uh, it can handle concurrent uh, requests at the same time. And then uh, Express, or oh, what is Express, is a web framework uh, of Node.js that helps, um, that handles routing to the, to the right parts of the backend uh, server app. And then we also use MongoDB which is a NoSQL database uh, to help us make our application data persistent. Uh, other tools uh, that we use include uh, Travis CI, which is uh, continuous uh, integration. And then we also use Git as our version control system. Uh, we also use uh, Amazon S3 to, to store our uh, images. And then last but not least, we deploy our application into Heroku, which is a service, a platform as service, uh, to so that uh, our apps can run in the cloud. So we have uh, three stakeholders for our apps. Uh, the first one is project owners. It can be either organization or individuals who want to initiate. Uh, sustainability events or campaign. Uh, we also have public, which is anyone uh, who wants to take part in sustainability project. And we also have admins from SSM. So an admin will be able to grab projects and make sure only the big ones are put up to the application. With this, I will hand over to Eunice, who will walk us through the demonstration. Yeah, thank you very much. So now we we'll look at the website itself. Okay, so as mentioned by Mariana, actually we have three different roles in the website. The first one is the public, the second one the project owner, and the third one the administrator. So the first one we'll show you is the home page. As we scroll down, we can see various projects on the home page. And if we click on the um, view all projects, we should be able to search for different projects. So now we'll try to search for the month of March and then we click the word filter. We should be able to see the projects that are in the month of March. And if I'm really interested in a project, I'll just click on the project itself and we'll sh we should be able to see more details of the project. Yeah. Now back to the home page. Uh, if you are keen to register as a project owner, you can actually sign up as a project owner by clicking, up, clicking on the sign up link and filling, the, filling in the necessary details. And then we'll go back to the home page again. And now we'll log in as a project owner. Yeah, so the project owner is able to post uh, environmental projects on the website. So uh, as you can see here, there are four different tabs. One is pending approval, active, inactive, and rejected projects. Yeah. And then if you click on the plus sign on the right hand side, we can post a project. Yeah. For example, we just have a project on decluttering since it's the hype now. 
<laughs> yeah, we key the necessary details and we add a picture to entice people to uh, click on the project. Yeah, so, um, then we can click on the project type, which is recurring once a week. For example, you want to make a New Year's resolution to maybe declutter your room every week, and then we click on preview. So this provides us as a way to like see a preview of the project before we actually submit it. So uh, we go back to form. If we are pleased with the the project listing, we will just click on the submit. And upon submission, we should be able to see it in the pending approval tab right at the bottom. Yeah. So uh, this project will be um, subjected subjected to admin approval later. Okay, so uh, as a side feature, we're also able to uh, edit the profile of the project owners. So for example, we'd like to change the profile photo. We can just uh, change the dog instead. And then update the account. And then we go back to the dashboard and scroll to the bottom. We can see actually that our profile is updated. Yeah. Okay, then now we'll move on to the admin, admin role. The admin is to ensure like that the projects are uh, legitimate. So uh, this this endpoint here is not available to the public. Only only uh, the administrators know of this endpoint. Yeah. So we we'll use a dummy account and login. Okay. So similar to the project owners, we also see four different tabs, but they are showing all the projects across the site. So uh, yeah, for for example, if we'd like to reject a project, uh, we click on the first project as an example. We can actually click on, uh, I mean, for example, we see that this project doesn't have an address and then we want to reject it. We just click on the reject button and provide a rejection reason. So for example, like, uh, please enter your address. So when this happens, press yes, and then uh, it will appear on the rejected tab with the rejection region. So what the project owner can do is actually edit the project and then it will go back to pending approval later. Yeah. Okay, so now we'll show you how we approve a project as well. So for example, we'd like to approve the first project and then we just click on the approve button and then yes. And then it should appear on the active tab and as, as well as the home page for public view. So that's the general flow of our website. Okay. So if you have any other questions, feel free to approach our team members. Okay. So now we'll uh, like to before we open up the floor to questions, we'd like to actually thank uh, Tech Ladies for providing us with this opportunity to learn, and we'd like to thank ThoughtWorks for our coaches and logistics as well as SSN for the problem statement. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. back end as well, 
uh, there are a lot of things when when we are given a card, then uh, in the progress of doing the card, I'm not sure how to debug or what went wrong. And then, uh, of course, time management is the issue. Like, uh, I need to give my, myself a certain time, and then uh, it still cannot figure out, and I will need to ask the coaches during the meeting. So in the bootcamp, the coaches teach us several tools to debug. For example, first is the inspect, right? Then after that, we can use the uh, postman, or um, we can use the debugger also in the Chrome. So, and then uh, I think it's very important to know the fundamentals, which uh, I like, and the coaches are very strong in fundamentals. So, um, when I go to the meeting, uh, it's always, um, I mean, the solution is always there. So, uh, as a beginner, I would think that I need time management. Um, after a certain time, then I need to move on to another part or try other stuff. I mean, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, do, am I answering your question? Yes, 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 yeah, yeah. Someone else? I think for me personally, uh, reading through, uh, through a lot of documentation was difficult because uh, we used this uh, material UI React. So um, just to you know display some things, I had to like look through all the tabs to make sure like which, which one like contains the documentation for that. And it, it, it's really time consuming. So, um, and also, uh, yeah, on, on that note, also about time management, because like you, uh, we have meetings on Saturdays as well as uh, additionally on Wednesdays as well. So we have to make sure that we have something to show for, um, to the coaches so that we have, we have something to discuss rather than just being stuck on something and not moving on from that. So yeah, I think time management Um, okay, so from the coach's perspective, I think um, we have to balance um, the, the girls' learning as well as getting this application production ready, right? So um, I think many times when you do development, you appreciate the natural evolving of your code. So you create like abstract layers on top of maybe very verbose code at the beginning. Then you start to appreciate the beauty of your code. But um, sometimes you juggle with teaching the girls versus like um, having nice code enough to get it production ready. So many times we kind of jump a few steps ahead and we, we extract as much as we can. We create all these abstract layers. So the, the ladies, they jump in and they need to learn how to use these classes that we already built for them. So there are these things that we kind of struggle with while teaching at the same time making sure that it's going to be good enough for production, yeah. Yeah, and I'm going to summarize and I think some of the challenges that we think so. Yeah, it is very difficult to, to pinpoint exactly how much time to spend on uh, re like going through the concepts versus finishing up the, the features that we are implementing. So, like, yes, we have to decide what's, what's more important, what we should spend more time on. But overall, I think we did a good job. <laughs> yeah, I think you did a great <laughs> job. Don't you think you did a great job? <laughs> so I think that time management seems to be a common challenge. And I think it's, it's very relevant for the audience here, especially for women trying to learn how to code. All of you have your regular day, your day time jobs, right? So that's everyone else here. So I'm just curious to, to learn how do you eventually you know, balance between, or, or do you just say that, okay, for the next 12 weeks, I'm going to sacrifice Netflix, you know? So how do you find a balance? Maybe you can start from you, because don't say anything. <laughs> I guess it's like a commitment. Like once you set it as a commitment, you just have to keep pushing through. So I, yeah, that's my main motivation, I guess. Yeah, um, like when we volunteered for this thing, we did make a big commitment, and so we had to set set aside some fixed time just for preparation of the lessons and the lessons itself. Uh, and I think we were quite disciplined with with our time. And, uh, I mean, it's difficult to get disciplined, but we, we have to do it when you make a commitment. 
No, actually, at the first lesson, we took out all our phones, we deleted all our Netflix apps. <laughs> so, like, no one could watch Netflix the entire four weeks. Um, no, I'm, I'm kidding. So, we actually spent more than once a week meeting up. We actually met up on Wednesdays as well um, to kind of uh, reinforce the learnings of the week and also to teach them additional concepts so that on Saturday we could spend like a full day on just development. And we struggle with that because sometimes when you're pairing with adults, you kind of want to jump into the solution because you need to solve it. You don't have that luxury of time to work through and teach for three hours before you, you, you finish a task. So we, we do that a lot, we, we jump into the solution. So that, that takes away a bit of that learning experience, but yeah, that's what you have when you are you have very limited time, I guess. Yeah. Uh, for me, yeah, I sacrifice my weekends. And I think one more thing, I think uh, it's just like, I don't know, we are all stressed up, right? But I feel that the atmosphere was quite nice. I mean, even though uh, I'm you know, I feel I'm quite slow, but nobody really like really blame me or laugh at me. So that kind of atmosphere also helped in this um, in, in this time management thing. Because somehow if you're happy then you just to work better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that that generally sums it up. Yeah. 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 Yeah
if I could just like maybe like you know uh, so I don't need them there for like uh, the full 30 minutes or one hour helping to give up just like maybe a quick question and then they'll give me a hint so I think that's quite important yeah thanks for being vulnerable guys <laughs> Someone else? <laughs> Any questions? No? Okay. Hi. I'd just like to know how was the selection done? How did you select the participants? And how did you pair them up? Uh, what was the process? And overall, how many hours or days of work did you put in on the project of participants as well as the so for the selection, we actually use an app that is built by... Things that you think you have to 
do, but when you actually break them down and then you like set like checkboxes to make yourself happy, you know, yeah, you know, <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it helps you to like get the flow of the um, function out properly, and uh, yeah, it it makes the task a lot less daunting. So definitely get your um, to do this out. Mine was on a text file, so it was really ugly, but it served its purpose. So yeah, and um, I think it's really um, important to, like I said, maintain the. Um, Belief that you can do it because I think a lot, maybe personally, I don't have a lot of belief that I can do it. But sometimes I surprise myself and I feel so happy after that. Like it's almost like doing math in school and you solve the problem and you're like, yes, I'm a genius. <laughs> and then the next problem comes and you're like, oh no, but yeah, just keep pressing on. For me, it's more technical. Like actually, I think uh, having a good foundation in programming is not for just coding itself. Like learning what for loops are and like um, yeah, just understanding basic programming will help you really uh, get into the web development later. Yeah. Uh, then after that, it's more about like asking questions on, with the coders and like um, learning from them the technical aspects of web development. Yeah. I would say to like as a beginner, if you are interested in coding, you want to know what exactly it's all about and whether it's a field for you, don't be afraid, it's not rocket science. Uh, anyone can learn it. There are so many available courses online, there are materials found everywhere. Uh, just go for it, look into it, look at what all these uh, JavaScript Java is all about. There are code wars, uh, websites where you like to practice coding. And there are like YouTube tutorials where they go through step by step on how to do stuff. And then of course there are boot camps like the one that ladies provides and many more. So please do join me. We really need a lot of females in tech. Like me and Amanda, we are like on the floor and we are like the only two females, you know, <laughs> with like a bunch of guys. So I really like love to see like uh, females stepping forward. And I feel really proud of them. Uh, like in such a short period of time, they have actually learned so much and they have started doing their own stories by themselves. So it's really, uh, like, it makes me feel really happy that, you know, like, we have helped them to reach this far. So yeah, don't be afraid, go for it. Also, shout out to ThoughtWorks, they have a Jumpstart program, which is a, uh, how, how long is it? Uh, it's a three month program. Three months, full time boot camp. Just Google it, jump start my thought box. Uh, yeah, that's another uh, introductory uh, programming bootcamp I teach uh, full set. Uh, yeah, full set. And yeah, so that's that's also another way we can like you can get into programming and understand stuff. Yeah, thought box. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, with that, uh, thank you so much team and send us another round of applause.